Hey guys, welcome to Q&A number 37, 38, one of the two. Uh, anyway, welcome. If you're new, I am Whitney Whitaker, the owner and head dog trainer at Milligan Valley Canine Academy. And Danielle, she'll be joining me here in a few moments. Um, she's one of my trainers and she assists me in a lot of what I do. Um, we historically get questions on the Q&A regarding how to stop unwanted behaviors. That's good. We, we're really good at stopping unwanted behaviors. However, the flavor of the Q&A, gen, generally speaking, is punishment-based, tends to be punishment-based because the questions we're getting are how do I stop unwanted behaviors. You wanna scoot in and join me? Sure. So, when it comes to dog training, we are not the dog trainers that are ever going to tell you to ignore it. We're never gonna tell you to redirect it. It doesn't work, so we're not gonna tell you to do that. We are gonna give you the real answers that work, and sometimes in that, it doesn't sound pretty on paper, but it works. So that's kind of the flavor of how the Q&A generally goes because we get a lot of how do we stop this or how do we stop that, okay? What we do here, we are family pet dog trainers um, and we uh, do aggression rehab and we'll do uh, anxiety rehabs here, okay? And we do private training and we do board and train and we do Skypes and FaceTimes. So those are some of the services that we offer. But in addition to that, we like to put out as much free help and as much free content as we can through YouTube, Facebook, uh, and Instagram. All right, ready to roll? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is a little bit <clears throat> like going downhill there. There we go. Keep going that way. Perfect. Better? Mm -hmm. Lauren McCauley. Hi, Hi Lauren. Don't oh, wait when you we're when slipping. You <laughs> Whoops. Here, I better not put it on this. Technical difficulty, guys. Sorry. What's what is happening right now? It's okay, so guys, in full transparency. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um we got a new like little tripod. Tripod. And, and um Wait. This is what happens when you just pull it out of the box and you're and just say, like, hey, let's bam. do this. There you go. Okay. That works. I mean, I feel like we need booster seats or something, but it's I know, because it keeps slipping, though. Every time I put it, okay, okay. is that? That's uh, good. It's still going down. It's going down. <laughs> it's fine. I'm it's fine. not seeing it. <laughs> it's like slowly. <clears throat> Lauren right. McCauley. Hi, first off, super cute new picture. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you. That was quite the picture to attempt to get in the mud. We should. Because we were like, ew, it's muddy. Oh no, the dogs are going to be muddy. You were saying, ooh, it's muddy. No, you were like, I don't want Roman in this mud. I don't, I don't want him in this mud. Yeah. And I was like, it's a little mud. We'll just wipe him off. Yeah, but I mean, saying like, ooh, it's muddy, like makes me sound like I'm like, ooh, it's, you know, it's not me, but certainly Benny and Roman, they don't need to be covered in mud. And here's me like, well, we'll wipe them off. My dogs are fine. We should post up some of the blooper pictures, like. Okay. It's too far now. Oh my gosh. Anyway, Lauren, <clears throat> let's get to your question. Um, how do you teach a lab not to eat your hand when taking treats? Putting on the floor instead of giving through hand helps, of course, but in some cases it distracts from what I'm doing, like accomplishing a sit stay if put on the floor, she breaks the sit to be able to reach the food. Thanks again. So, is the dog just being rude or is the dog eating your hand? Okay. So then I would, I, I'd imagine, so you give the food and a, and a nip is happening. So in that case, you need to squash that arousal. So you can give her a little bonk for that. So you could no and give her a little bonk. And then you also could, if you wouldn't mind like being like demo dog here for a second. You can also like, <laughs> it's okay. You're, Okay, so it's like you present the food and then the the, the and then the dog <laughs> the dog comes at you, right? So you can also withhold the food, bring it back. Mm -hmm. 
present the food again the dog comes at you with hold the food right so you could do that a little bit but if the dog is 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 being a little aggressive with it you can absolutely take your bonker underneath your arm present the food uh dog goes to like eat your hand as you say and just no whack you know uh, with the bonker so either of those things or a combo between the two would be good all right thanks for the question lauren okay so another lauren oh. lauren taylor um her so the dog, first one was lauren mccauley okay all right yeah okay did you not believe me no i, I forgot for a sec is it you didn't believe that uh -huh. it's like, and you're like no i wasn't paying attention <laughs> but okay. okay yeah so lauren taylor yes let's have it uh, her pup is 10 weeks old. Okay. Um, watched your video training Avery in the cage when you brought her home using a bonker. Mm -hmm. Bonking, bonking the cage doesn't seem to work. He just looks at it and keeps barking, biting, and putting paws through the cage. All he wants is out. He's starting to respond to no some. Mm -hmm. Um, conditioning with food and good. After a couple minutes of her sitting next to the cage, him, with her sitting next to the cage, him laying down quiet, we're back to bar barking. Um, say no down and he's back down, but it's like a loop. I was able yeah. to get 10 minutes of quiet laying today. Is there something I'm doing wrong? <clears throat> You're not doing anything wrong at all. Um, here's the thing. All guys, all that puppies are is just a tornado wrapped in a fur coat. That's all they are. <laughs> you didn't think that was funny? No, it was funny. I was reading the rest oh. of your question to be yeah. honest with you. Like that's all they are. Okay, they're just a ton of work. Um, it's not necessarily that maybe you're doing anything wrong. We just got to, like, tweak some things. So, first off, for anybody out there that's, like, going to be appalled at what I say next, that's fine. But we give answers that work because we want to keep dogs in their original homes. Okay? Number one age to uh, rehome a dog is pre one years old. Fact. Okay? Danielle is in a condo, okay? If she is a barking puppy that's, that is incessantly barking and won't shut up, she's gonna receive a letter from a homeowner, the homeowners association. So, I don't know where Lauren lives, but if she lives in an apartment, if she lives in a condo, okay? If she has young children that can't sleep at night, like these are all reasons that the dog could be rehomed. So again, for anybody that thinks this is gonna be extreme for a 10 week old puppy, guys, we gotta like put this in perspective here, okay? Lauren, we need to remember, guys, anytime I tell you to correct or discipline or punish your dog, please always remember you're calm, you're relaxed, you're matter of fact. Leave emotion out of it. If you're frustrated, bury it deep, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to, as soon as the dog starts barking, I want you to mark it with no. No. Walk in the room, pull the dog out of the crate, bonk, put the dog back in the crate, shut the door, walk out, quiet, 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 good food. High value, what piece of hot dog or something? Good food. Absolutely, I want you to counter condition. Absolutely. There's no question about that. I want you to reinforce the quiet. But reinforcing the quiet won't stop the 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 loud. It won't it won't start the uh, I'm sorry, stop the barking without applying a, a punisher. So normally you bonk the cage and that works. And if it's not working, then you might need to go a step further and just pull the dog out and give him a little, a little bonk. Try that. Um, but it's tough. Raising puppies, it's tough. So give that a try, Lauren. Thanks for, thanks for uh, your question. All right, perfect. Jennifer Muller, how do you get a dog? What is, what is happening in that glass? I don't know. You handed it to me. I did, but do you see what I'm seeing? I didn't seeing? look at it. Do you it's see fine. what I'm seeing? It's fine. It's hard water residue. Does yours look like that? I don't know, and I'd rather not know if it does. Let me drink my water wanna, in peace. You want to switch me? Let me drink my Bible. You want to switch? Okay, anyway. I'll switch you. Okay. Got it now. Okay. Good? Yeah. 
Uh, how do you get a dog to stop jumping on you and others when they are excited to see you? We've tried multiple things and nothing seems to work. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You're just a lot with the... You're just like yeah. wanting to do the things today, yeah. huh? You're wanting yeah. to try to be the funny one today? I'm trying, but it's like... <laughs> trying to be that yeah, funny yeah. one? Yeah, it's just, I feel like it's not working. At least with you, it's not. You're in, you are in serious work mode today. I know. <laughs> I came in serious work I'm mode. I'm not used to it, so. All right. Easy, Jennifer. Easy. So first off, we have videos on the uh, YouTube channel on how to do this. Dog jumps on um, anyone. You have to make the act of jumping suck, okay? Guys, remember, there's dogs lined up in dog shelters right now. And the only reason they're there is because they were jumping and knocking people over and their owners couldn't fix it. They went to dog trainers, weren't taught how to fix it. You know why? Because it doesn't sound good. Right? So you go to a dog trainer and they tell you, redirect it. Wrong. This is not going to work. I've never met one person. And I've trained well over a thousand dogs. I've never, not once met one person that told me that redirecting the act of a jumping dog has worked. Yeah, but we've met many people who have said, well, we tried redirecting, but it just didn't, doesn't work. It many just people. doesn't work. Yeah, many and we're people. Like, we know. And I'm like, I know. So again, on this Q&A, some of this stuff might not settle well with some people, but I tell the truth. This is what's gonna work. And this was going to keep dogs in their original homes. You make the act of jumping uncomfortable to the dog. Dog jumps on your guest. What I want you to do, uh, prong collar, leash. Dog jumps up on your guest. I want you to simply go, no. Like, just matter of fact, no. Firm leash pop down. There's videos on my YouTube channel. And put that up in the comments. When we post this, we'll pop that yeah. video up in the comments for you uh, on, how, on how to... To stop and unwanted to be uh, unwanted jumping. If the dog jumps on you, sometimes it's hard when you have the leash and prong on to to give that pop away from you. You certainly can, um, but you can also take the tip of your uh, shoe and give them a little toe tap there in the belly. Um, but it has to be firm enough that the dog goes, oh, I don't want to do that again. So not a knee in the belly. Not because a, a knee in the belly is not firm enough. And that's some, one of the most common things I hear is, oh, just knee him in the belly. And yeah. I'm like, it doesn't always work if you do that. Yeah, or in the chest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't always work if you do that. So yeah. toe tap in the belly, that is guaranteed to work. Yeah. But here's how I always base the firmness of a correction. Because, guys, we work with everything from... Yorkies and Sheepoos and and we we work with um, pit bulls and mastiffs and power breeds and golden retrievers and old dogs and young dogs. So so it's like how do you how do you gauge a correction? Well, I started a reasonable point based on the dog and the age and the breed and all that. Um, I know when a correction works when it stops when the behavior stops. So if you tell me I've toe tapped, I've kicked the dog in the, in the belly 10 times and it's still and it's still jumping, guess what I'm gonna tell you? You, you haven't done it hard enough. Yeah. You're wimping <clears> out. <throat> so when we give corrections for jumping dogs, guys, it is, it's, it's, it's usually one and done. It's usually one and done. If not, it's definitely like a, under three times. Yeah. So. Next. Okay. Nick Marie, um, she says oh, hi. hi. How are you? <laughs> I trained her dog Ernie like two two years ago. Three so she two. says I'm pretty sure we'll be visiting you soon again, regardless. Oh, good. But how? I mean, I've I've liked working with you. Oh, good. Well, I've really liked working with you. But how do you get your newly adopted pup to take treats nicely? I've tried pulling it away the moment. Oh, I just realized mm -hmm. I I went through some of the questions, but I just realized same question kind of. Um, yeah. I realize he's being an alligator, but he isn't. I've tried pulling it away the moment I realize he's being an alligator, but he's just isn't an angel like Ernie with food. You would love Ernie. But I'll I'm... show you a picture of him. I follow her on Instagram. Okay. So you may have seen some pictures. He's just, he's a really cute, uh, oh, uh, English bulldog. Oh, I love English bulldogs. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Okay, so if you've tried the pulling it back part and he's just not catching on or doesn't doesn't really like that, just take a just take a bonker, give him a little bonk on top of the head. Tell him to knock it off. Be respectful. You know? Um, yeah, just give him a little bonk on top of mm -hmm. the head. It's good to hear from you. Um and if you need anything else, you know where to find me. Alright, next, next question, Caitlin Brown. Um, kind of a strange question. We have a four-year-old pit bull. He lately has been obsessively licking our eight-year-old pit. Um, she was spayed before they adopted the four-year-old. Um, he seems to be crawling out of his skin when he has these episodes. It's almost like he isn't neutered and she is in heat. Any idea on what would cause this? It came out of nowhere and has been happening for about two months, mainly at night and not every night. She understandably gets irritated with him. <clears throat> that is a strange question. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm just processing the whole thing. Processing the whole thing. That is a strange question. Um, but listen, weirder things have happened. Even my own personal dogs have like, yeah. done some pretty weird stuff like that. Um, yeah, not like really a strange question, just like a question we don't get normally and we've not really had to deal well, with. Well, like, yeah, and it's not a Like it's, it's not, not common, common behavior. <clears throat> so here's the thing. So um, I'm assuming that your dog is getting irritated, but she's not putting the new dog in its place. So she's like irritated, but she's not irritated enough that she's going to like chase him off. You know what I mean? Um, so you have to do that for her. So when it comes to leadership in our dog's lives, it's up to us to keep everything. What's the word I'm looking for? Keep everything like, come on, help me out here. I don't know. It's up to us to keep everything. I, really, I, I wanted to say level when you kept going like yeah, this. So then I, then I like couldn't think of another word besides yeah, level. level. Yeah, level. Because the word I was going to grasp for was not, not what I'm looking for. But it's up to us like as the leaders to keep everybody everybody in check everybody in check that's what i was going for okay um so it's our job so you're gonna advocate for your original dog and say i'm, I'm not gonna let him drive you nuts like that and so you could say no and and um It's hard because you just got the dog. Because the dog doesn't even know no. No, they didn't. Probably doesn't even. Just get the they dog. They didn't just get the dog? No. Mm -mm. I thought you said recently adopted. We have a four-year-old pit bull we found when he was five months old. Oh, well, I didn't grab. Mm. I thought, I, this is what I heard. And you know me. I just hear what yes. I hear. Yes. The, all I heard was we found wandering the streets. I didn't even say that part when I read it. Oh, I must have been reading you it. You must have been reading time. it because I was trying to shorten the question. Oh, so this is a dog you've had for a while? Yes. Oh, well. Yes. Anyway, so 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 teacher teacher dogs a place command for one. Don't let them just be like up in each other's face and bothering each other. Teach the them. other thing is too, I'm I'm not exactly sure. I almost feel like we need a little more context to it. I'm sure we can give some advice, but like she says it's happening at night. So like are they oh, like yeah. sleep? Like, is yeah. this happening when you're asleep? Is this yeah. happening? Like, what what's happening here? So, so Caitlin, um, I think you might be new to our world, and if so, welcome. And I appreciate the question. Um, dive into what we do. Dive into what we do. If you don't follow us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram. Check us out on YouTube. Um, we are really big advocates of structure. Okay. So, if this is that, thank you for picking up on that because I I didn't pick up on it. If the dogs are out together, that means they're not sleeping in crates, and that means that um, nobody's watching them because you're sleeping, right? So I would get them in crates, give them that structure so this isn't happening at night. Um, during the day, I'll teach your dog the place command, okay? So that when they're just hanging out in the house, they're each on their own place beds, relaxing, hanging out, napping, chewing bones, whatever, in the house. And then outside, they can run and play and interact with each other. Um, so, you know, again, if you follow us on like Instagram and stuff, you see that we're huge advocates of dogs running and playing and whatnot, which is not in the house. So it sounds like to me, 
there might be a lot going on with the dogs when they're unattended by you. Um, and that's not a, like a shaming, blaming comment. That's just like, hey, why don't you just like, why don't you just uh, supervise them um, a little bit more or when you're not supervising them, put them in their crates yeah, around the place. I think that we've, we've found a lot of times these answers are are just like, hey, you know, you give them a little bit more structure actually you'll find that when your dogs have more structure they can have more privileges yeah and they learn things and they make better decisions so yeah. a lot of times we'll have to start people off on hey let's give them a little more structure and let's go from there and see see what the problem is from there right and also it's like it's nice co folks come to us with this one problem so it's like all oh, the dog is is licking i'm like eh, there's probably more to it than that mm -hmm. it's probably an anxiety right. thing and the anxiety is probably being caused because of lack of structure, right? So yeah. it's kind of like a train. Right. So that's why I know for a minute you might be like, why did you go down this like structure train? I literally just want my dog to quit licking the others. Like, well, because experience tells me is that somebody that rehabs anxiety is that likely it's occurring because of lack of structure. Okay, but you absolutely can walk over to the dog, say no, bonk him, Give them a little pop on the prong collar, a little pop on the remote collar, something to tell the dog, stop licking my other dog to the point that it's driving her nuts. So you can do that in yep. the moment, but then add structure in. Sorry, that was super long-winded. I was a little bit confused in uh, some of the details on that. But. It's okay, but also write back in, and if you have like any, if you have any more questions about that, if you try the bonking and have any more questions, write back in, and we can give you more tips on like where to start with structuring. I always like whenever, <laughs> whenever you say. When I'm trying to wrap yourself no. right back in. Do I say? No. Do I do that? You don't do this. Oh. But I always love whenever you're like right back in because it makes me feel like we're like on Dear Abby or something. I don't. That's like, what these people right are Right back in. These people are writing in. Get your stationery. Are, are they not? I'm confused. What would you What would you rather me say? I'll start saying that. I I like the right back in, but that's where my mind goes. It's like where I'm like, Dear Abby or something where it's like, Hey, maybe I'll these, start my own blog these. where people can write in to me. You won't. You're, I keep you too busy. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> okay, ready? Next. Devin Michelle Jones. Hi, I'm trying to teach my Doberman to lay down and stay. How long is too long for a stay position versus the place position? Also, what is a good way to correct her when she comes out of the stay position before I tell her break? That is a great question. Yes, it is. So, thank you for your question. Thank you for writing in. What? I just don't know what else I'm supposed to say. Like, I don't know. I'm just saying that's what I think of. Stop <laughs> back in and check out our page and perhaps leave a comment My on if it? you if you were yeah. able to try that. Drop us a comment. Yeah, like you drop us a line or something. My brain. You'd rather me say drop us a line than write back in. I don't you rather. All I'm telling. Drop us a line if you uh, have you any more questions. My brain immediately goes to like. 1985, big hair, like Aquanet, like paper pencil stationery where people like. I loved 85. I'm not saying anything about 85. I wasn't born in 85. I'm that's where my brain goes. But I loved, I loved the 80s. I didn't, I did, it's fine. Maybe that's where my brain is because the 80s were awesome. Should have been a teenager then. You do love your 80s. Music. I know. It's, yeah, it's enough sometimes. <laughs> That's because you like nothing but country. All right. Um, Devin, thank you for your question. Good question. What you're going to do is, is you're going to correct the dog for non-compliance of breaking a known command. So it sounds like to me that your dog knows how to do a downstay, right? That's what it sounds like to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like your dog knows how to do a downstay. So we don't correct dogs for non-compliance of obedience commands until the dog has done it three to 500 reps mm -hmm. over. Okay. And we know that the dog knows and understands. So if your dog knows and understands, you're going to correct the dog for non-compliance of a known command. That's going to be on a prong collar. It's going to be no and 
a pop on a prong collar when they move, or it's gonna be a no and a tap on the remote collar if they move, whatever you're working on. Hopefully it's a remote collar because that's, that's the best. How long is too long? I always- Well, we also don't know honestly how old the dog is. So it, right now, I, I'm not sure if your dog is young, perhaps you are, can only use the, the prong collar. Yeah. Or like, yes succession sometimes you can only use the prong collar then switch to the e-collar which is the best thing to use yeah <clears throat> also the, how long could also determine how well how old your dog, dog is, is could yeah. determine how long as well yeah so. so let's say for dogs that are eight months or older let's just go with that eight months older or older um i i have a tendency to look at place as being um more long term, go there and relax for how long? Two, three, four hours. Uh, downstays are more like in the moment things. Like, eh, do a downstay because I'm gonna go get the mail. Do a downstay because I'm gonna like go in the pasture and feed my horse. Do a downstay because I'm gonna like unload the dishwasher. Like, Little or or because you're at a restaurant or you yes. downstay. Yeah. So so like if we were gonna take dogs to the brewery and we're gonna be there for like out on the patio for like hour and a half, I'd make a dog do an hour and a half long downstay, two hours. But we wouldn't necessarily make a dog do a two hour downstay at home while you were putting the dishes away or something where they're right. in an environment where they're comfortable. You could also put them in place for that. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah. You know. So I choose to make the dog more comfortable and say, hey, go lay in this comfortable bed for two hours because I got I have two hours worth of work I gotta do. So, um, but yeah, just inch them up to it. Just inch them up to it. Yep. Good question. Thanks for writing in. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right, so that was actually our last question. Um, our last few people, two people um, tagged us and then the Melissa Marriott said, I wish I could send my dogs to you. No, I really do. They so need your training. I try to follow you and your advice. Thanks for that. Oh, so well, that was nice. Yeah, thanks, Melissa. So so here's the thing, guys. Here's why we give out the free the free content and the help on um, YouTube, like the, the tutorial videos, why we have tips out on Instagram, and that's why we do the, the Q&A. Is you don't need to hire me or any dog trainer. You really don't. The secret is in the work that you do. The breadcrumbs are there. I'm not the only dog trainer out putting out good information. We have a, a lot of our colleagues put out really good information. So watch our stuff, watch other dog trainer stuff and apply it. The success comes in the application, okay? So there's nothing magical we do here. There really isn't. Yes, I mean, there is a skill set. Yeah. But like, I can't stand the egos in the dog training industry. It's incredible sometimes. It's like, I don't have magic powders in my pocket and um, I don't have this like God-given gift with dogs. You know, it's just like I've just honed my craft over years and I'm gonna continue to do so. Um, so we always hope that we become better dog trainers. That's the goal. So here's the thing, Melissa, just apply the information. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I can tell you what to do, but if you don't, if you don't finish this video and then go and do it, it doesn't matter. It won't work. It won't work. And Melissa, you write in anytime you have a question. You write yeah, in. Everybody, just write in. Write in. <laughs> or drop us a line yeah. and a comment yeah. and we will help you. But no, leave seriously, us a, leave us a comment anytime. This is, we are, we actually look forward to our Q&As every week. We love it. Yeah. If we think it's fun. We love that people want to interact with us. We love that people are actually taking our advice and trying on their own to train their dogs. And hearing it's, the success stories yeah. from people that it haven't makes us paid really us happy. a dime. Yeah. People so. that haven't paid us a dime t t telling us, like, my dog is off leash trained now. Like, I thought I was going to have to rehome my dog, and now, you know, we got him under control. So we really are, we really are happy to help you guys. All right. Until next time.